Are you looking to start a business? Well, come with me on this journey and I will take you through everything that you need to know, as far as I know, in order to start your business now. What's up guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Scribbles, the artist and crocheter behind Eclectic Scribbles and we are starting a brand new video. I have had a couple of comments on some of my previous videos about people wanting to know more about the business side of things and how to really get started business wise. So we're going to sort of break those down into a few different videos and we're going to start to finish learn how to set up a new business. I'm going to approach this from two different viewpoints, I guess, because I'm an artist and I am a crocheter. And so those two, generally speaking, don't go hand in hand one will go one way and the other will go the other way and it's two completely different niches so when i am talking about these different things i will tell you the crochet side of things that i know about and i will tell you the art side of things that i know about and we're going to go through and we're going to start a business and we're going to build it up and i'm going to help walk you through all of those things and if at any point during any of the videos you have any further questions about what you need to do about something drop them into the comments of the video feel free to ask as many questions as you want and i will try to address as many as i possibly can let's get started first you need a name you need a name and i mean let's go eclectic scribbles don't do that no no <laughs> oh my god don't do that. Nobody can say or spell eclectic. Go with something nice, easy to say, easy to remember. Look it up. Make sure nobody else is doing it. You want to find something that is easy to say, easy to spell, is available, and you can get a domain for. And we'll work on the domain issues later. But just go on like a host gator site or something like that where they let you type in and see if a domain name is available and look up whatever your name is and see if that's available those are the things that you want though it has to be easy to say it has to be easy to spell people need to remember it and it needs to be available after you get your name all worked out you need to register yourself as a business. You can do this in a couple of different ways or several different ways. Actually, the easiest way is to go in the United States and file for an employee identification number or EIN with the federal government. This is 100% free to do. It is easy. All you do is key in all of your information. I will put a link down in the description box and you can get your employee identific employer identification number right there on the spot. Do know that if you have an employee identification number, you cannot have more than one. If you have ever had one, you cannot get another. So keep that in mind if you've had a business before that you had and didn't quite take off and you don't use it anymore, that is still attached to your social security number and you will need to use that and file a name change or whatever the case may be with the thing. I am, this is not legal advice. This is not business advice. This is my business opinion. <laughs> Take everything that I say with a grain of salt, maybe a couple of grains of salt because I've been here and I've done this, but legally speaking, these are my opinions. These are my opinions, okay? <laughs> Let's get that disclaimer out of the way really, really quick. All right, the other, the other direction that you can go, and I don't really suggest this when you're starting out, is to form an LLC or some sort of corporation. I am incorporated now, Eclectic Scribbles LLC, is what I go by, but that is not free. It takes a little bit more to get into. Uh, you're looking about two to $300 to set up an LLC and it's gonna run you about $200 per year to set that LLC up. When a sole proprietorship for most people is 100% good enough. When you have your employer identification number, you can go in and set up a bank account specifically for your business. Most banks only require your ID and that employer identification number letter that you get from the IRS in order to start a bank account. It is extremely, extremely important that your personal bank account and your business bank account are 100% detached from each other like one is just personal and one is just business even if you're planning on paying yourself out of your business account do not mix business and personal 
do, just just don't do it don't do it it gets messy it gets hard to keep up with and bookkeeping is a nightmare you do not want to do it speaking of bookkeeping you need to be able to track your sales your purchases your everything you need to be able to track everything there are some apps that will allow you to track everything and they will hook up to your bank account so anytime money goes in or out you can just go through and yep that was right that was right and you can check it off and that will help you in heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps <laughs> when it comes to tax time at the beginning of the year. I would suggest also getting like a file folder or like accordion system that you can separate out your receipts into months because you also need to keep your receipts as well. You can use apps like QuickBooks is a really, really popular one because it also goes into helping when you actually go in to file your taxes. It's all right there, neat as you please. And it will give you sort of where your business stands and a profit margin or whatever, whether you've got way too much money going out and not enough money coming in and all of that good stuff it's just easy to see but there are several people that I know and I've done it personally that just have google sheets just have google sheets and they key it in manually in fact I've got some budget stuff over on my patreon that you can use to keep track of budgets and spending and all of that good stuff so there is a google sheets like folder over there that you can track all of your income and expenses with that again this is not business or legal advice but if you are a business you need to learn how to write things off write those things off write off everything me personally just some examples of things that you may not think of off the top of your head i'm a business i am the face of my business i am a content creator i am a youtube creator you know i am the face of my business when i go out and i go to events and things like that and conventions and markets and all of that i am the face i am the face okay my meals are a write-off any art supplies that i make or any art supplies that i use or purchase are a write-off my hair and my nails and all of that good stuff is a write-off because that is part of bringing my stuff to you um literally everything can be a write-off if you want to go and actually have a vacation at any point and you vlog it or something like that write off <laughs> write off because that is part of your content creation your vehicle insurance your gas your mileage all of this stuff is wear and tear on your vehicle all of that or write it off learn how to write off as much as humanly possible especially when it comes to tax time you thank me later thank me later but there are several things that you may not think of that you could actually write off as part of your business and the hair appointments and the nails were sort of an example of that things that actually are right off for me because I'm a content creator and I put my face out to the world as part of my business so looking halfway decent although I don't right now <laughs> although she needs to go get her hair done now but somebody I'm not mentioning any names is taking up all her money but all of those things are in fact write-offs for me if you have a question about anything that you may be able to write off for your business i would ask a tax professional maybe an accountant or something like that but there are things that you may not think of that you can write off next up you need a presence people need to know you exist and most people well right now if we're starting a business together nobody knows you exist no one at all knows you exist so you need to make sure that you can set up your social media platforms and basically have a cohesive name from social media to social media so you don't want to be billy bob on one and jim dandy on the other you want to be billy bob billy bob billy bob billy bob right on everything so that goes back into when you are making your business name make sure that you can get the actual user ids that go along with that as well it's really important to just it's easier it is easier for people to find you if you're like I'm eclectic scribbles even though nobody can say it and nobody can spell it I'm that's where I'm that's what I am everywhere so 
the key to social media is to just get started, okay? You do not have to show your face like I do if you're not comfortable, but I will say that showing your face on social media is gonna go a little bit easier than not showing your face, but there are artists out there artists and crocheters and everybody who do not show their face on any of their social media platforms that do just fine do absolutely fine so whatever you feel comfortable with if you're not comfortable with putting your face and everything out there to begin with then you don't have to i got I got this nifty little thing for my camera and this wraps around your neck. It goes over your neck and it holds the camera right in front of you so that you can work on whatever right in front of you and the camera can see it. This is a nifty little thing. I will link it in the description box and all of the stuff that I use is always linked to my Amazon storefront as well. So just start posting. There is no time like the present. Try and have as cohesive a posting schedule as you can and a posting like the way that you post your content try to make it as cohesive as possible i've done this by putting the same sort of backgrounds behind all of my posts like the posts that show in my like instagram feed you're going to see that i've got a checkered background on the back of my art and sticker sheets and stuff like that and then i've got sort of a wooden background behind all of my plushies and so the, that keeps the entire feed itself cohesive. So just try and figure that out. If you want to hold a plushie out on the crochet side, if you want to hold a plushie out in front of a nice green bush or something like that, and you do that often, then that creates the cohesive feel that you're looking for. If you are doing art and you want to just have the art like zoomed in, that gives a cohesive feel to how people can notice your work is your work and not somebody else's they'll immediately see that those things go sort of hand in hand together and they will actually be like oh okay I know who this is I don't even have to I don't even have to guess who it is so you need to start building a following the only other thing that you can do really with social media is try and figure out hashtags just use some basic hashtags go to your favorite creators the ones that are already doing this stuff the ones that are doing something similar to you look and see what hashtags they use if any and just copy a couple of those down nobody owns hashtags nobody no one owns a hashtag so it is okay if you go and look at someone who is already in a place that you would like to be sooner or later and see what kind of hashtags they're using what seems to be working for them and and implement that into what you're doing so if there are like two or three crochet amigurumi type hashtags that you see that a lot of different people use and get your butt in there and use that hashtag same thing goes with art if there is a couple of things that stand out that a lot of different people use get in there get in there and use your hashtags as well try to be as interactive on social media as you can and when i say interactive i mean go to other people's posts start posting like comments and things under other people and interacting with other people in your sort of niche and that will help build like community as well and then eventually those people may come back and actually follow you as well they'll recognize your name that pops up over and over and over again so if they happen to be scrolling in their feed and you've been someone who's been interacting with them over and over and over again oh i know that name oh i don't follow them let me give them a follow so things like that can really help when it comes to social media as well all right so you have got your business name you've got some sort of a system in sneezy sneezy down here you've got your business name you've got some sort of system in place to track your inventory and all of that good stuff the next thing that you need is a product she's gonna sneeze about five more times so the first thing that you need to do is create your first product or your first set of products something like that I know if it's art you generally want to build up a couple of things before you start to actually sell anything you want to sort of build up a little bit of anticipation hey I think I'm going to drop all of these things on such and such date at this time and you can tease them 
tease them on your Instagram feed, TikTok, wherever you are, just sort of tease what's coming. And that'll build up some anticipation when you drop all of the things at once. The same thing can be done for crochet. You can crochet plushies and once you have a bunch together, then you can tease those and then you can have a plushie drop. Or if you're like me and you like to create patterns, you can have a pattern drop. A good way to gain some traction and some following if you are a crochet pattern designer is to put out tester calls for your patterns and let let a few people test them and you'll get a lot of interest from those as well always acknowledge your testers in one way or another in like a tester appreciation post once everybody's you know giving you their feedback and you've taken all of those notes and incorporated it into the final product or I have the last page of my patterns now is a thank you to all of my pattern testers and I include their links down there as well if anybody wants to go and follow any of my pattern testers. So there's different ways that you can do that as well and that is another form of interaction that will allow your account on social media to grow. But yeah, you can either have like several patterns drop at one time. You can drop patterns one at a time if you like, or you could do plushy drops. You can do things like that. You can also, when you're in the crochet world, if your interests sort of go beyond just crocheting plushies or just creating patterns, there are several designers out there who like to do like amigurumi sticks or hooks or safety eyes like that are hand painted stitch markers that they put together and that are custom so there's so many different things felt eyes and all other things that you can include in your crochet business and once you have the product once you have the product you need a place where people can actually purchase this product from you okay and this is a little bit of a controversial subject i believe and i am going to get into it and the reason why I said make sure your domain name would be available for your shop is I really believe that you need to start your own website from jump. From the start, start your own website. There are a number of places that you can do this for free and that's great. But I would highly recommend a shop like Shopify or something like that is a little bit pricier yes it is it is like a forty dollars a month for the basic plan and then you can add on other features and apps that really aren't necessary immediately to the site itself so you're looking at about forty dollars a month for just a basic shopify plan but you're going to drive your traffic to your website from your social media you are going to drive traffic to that link to your website where you are the only person who is taking fees <laughs> out of the actual purchase itself besides any credit card processing fees you want complete control over where you direct the traffic. The other option is to go the Etsy route. And if you wanna start just on Etsy, then by all means do it. I mean, that's fine. It is a very, very low barrier to entry. You can look at a bunch of different listings, see what is working for people, and look at some of your favorite creators on Etsy and sort of try to emulate what they're doing and make it your own and then start selling your stuff on Etsy. I mean, I, I have an Etsy right now and I 100% believe that Etsy is a good platform for beginners and will get you organic traffic. Organic traffic of people who are already on Etsy looking for things all over the world. People are looking for things on Etsy and you will get some sales, you will get some traction, you will get views on your products over there. But Etsy's fees are a bit hefty. And if you want more exposure when you are a itsy bitsy very beginning sort of business, you're going to want to turn on ads. You're going to want to turn on ads and that is basically the way that you're going to get found on Etsy. I personally, right now, I have tried to do my full shop on Etsy a couple of different times and it's, it's not for me. So my Etsy is nothing but digital products right now, which means that I don't have to worry about shipping. I don't have to worry about a lot of those things. People get their digital download as soon as they make their purchase. And I just leave that as my digital stuff right now. And if you're just doing digital, you don't have a lot to worry about with Etsy fees there. Anyway, I have noticed that Etsy charges you an extra fee 
own your postage. And this was another reason that I took it down to digital, digital only is because I would be paying like a dollar and 92 cents for the postage of a flat rigid mailer when I was mailing out stickers or sticker sheets or something like that. And Etsy would then send me to the printout page for my actual USPS like shipping label. And when I put it on there, it says a dollar and 72 cents. And I'm like, um, Etsy, bitch, where is my 20 cents? <laughs> like, Etsy charges a lot of fees. There are a lot of fees. They're hidden in there all over the place. And so that's why I say if you're going to be directing your traffic to somewhere, direct them to your website. Do not direct them to Etsy. Let people who are already searching on Etsy find your stuff there. So maybe if you are on the art side, still do a little bit of your stuff there, but have your full catalog, say, on your actual website and anytime anybody purchases from me and this was mostly when there were physical items anytime anybody purchases something from me on etsy when i pack and ship their order i always have like a little label or a little card or a little something in there that tells them that i have my own website and the full catalog of my stuff is on that website should they choose to shop with me in the future some people are never going to leave etsy they're never going to convert from being on Etsy to being in your shop. But that is not to say that all of them won't convert. A lot of people will convert as well. So you always want to have that hook. You're going to drag them away from Etsy once they found you and you're going to push them to your site. I've said this in a previous video. When you're filling out your stuff on Etsy, make sure you have all the banners that they suggest. Make sure that you have all of the categories filled out the way that they suggest. Set the entirety of the shop up. Do not leave anything blank. Etsy doesn't like that. They want everything to be filled out so that there is no confusion for your customers. So make sure that you're just giving Etsy everything that it wants when you set up. But anyways, so this is going to be your base structure. And what we're going to do in sort of the next video for this is we're going to go and look and see what it takes to sort of launch a product, a line, and actually get the first products out into the shop. Now, I'm not an expert, like I said, but I'm going to take you through everything that I did when I started my business, and I'm going to take you through each of the steps to get to where you need to be. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I will address them in the comments, and anything that seems to be a running theme, I will address in the next video. If you have any questions about anything there whatsoever, just let me know. Make sure that you hit the button that looks like this and give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Put a purple heart down in the comments if you don't have any questions because the comments really help us out in the algorithm. Don't forget to hit that little subscribe button. It's over this way. <laughs> and make sure you ding your notification bell to get informed each and every time I upload new content. Again, I hope you found this helpful. I will see you in the next video, in the next video of this series where we start to set up an actual product for both sides of my business. And I will see you then. I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Okay, goodbye. But I feel so lazy Yeah, I'm home alone all day And I got no more songs left to play Baby, I'm not all good
와줘 내게 I let me be your man Oh 